All right, hey traders, TG Watkins here. It is September 8th when I'm recording this, and it's in the morning. I'm on the road in Napa, so needed to get this kind of out there before we head out for the day. Uh, anyway, you should be seeing this Friday, and you know we'll see kind of what's changed but since then. But I'd say the last few weeks, uh, uh, the videos that I've been doing have been just uh, pretty good, spot on, watching the markets go down. Of course, we know what Jerome Powell has been saying about all that, and um, it's been working as far as trying to get things lower. Uh, one thing that uh, I think you guys would be interested in is if you've come over here to profit pilot.com and you check out um, this uh, video newsletter that I have called uh, happy day trade you know I don't always talk about day trading but when there are opportunities like what we saw Friday of last week during the day uh, it really lays out some good examples for how to day trade using the moxie indicator so basically the the way that I teach the moxie indicator on the daily hourly the 15 primarily you take that same principles and it's all fractal. You just then put it on the 15, the five and the two, same thing. I mean, just pretend it could be the daily hourly and 15, but it's the 15, the five and the two. And uh, this little video newsletter kind of shows you what it looked like on Friday about that big move down and how the Moxie indicator was showing you and reading it for you. So um, yeah, we got that. And then as far as the markets right now, we did have Jerome Powell speak this morning. I don't think he really said too much, basically kind of what we're expecting. Uh, they're, they're trying to engineer a soft landing, but they're still going to be raising rates. They're going to be holding for a while, you know, that kind of stuff. So nothing too drastic from his, uh, I guess, conversation this morning. And then I've been hearing some stuff about um, uh, bailouts for energy companies or just things trying to deal with inflation and just uh, all sorts of stuff. So I think we even have a ECB report coming out. Maybe you guys will see that by the time you see this video. And as far as the charts go, if we look at here with the daily chart, what did we just get this morning? We came up to the underside of the daily 50 and, and it got hit. So it just went up there, tapped it, got smacked back down. It's basically the same thing as here. And you can see that these are essentially the same thing, just one's up, one's down. It came, you know, price got up over the moving average and came back, tested it, and then moved up. And so, you know, this is why I'm basically looking to short the market because what do we do? Came back down. Yeah, up, hit it, and then, you know, probably back down. Now, it may not be as clean as this. It could still chop around, but I have been pretty clear in the last several videos I've been talking about that, you know, I was expecting to come from the 200 all the way back down to the 50, and it was probably going to go lower. That was spot on. Uh, I gave my Moxie group a, a target of 390, and we got exactly that. And um, at this point, I think that the fact that price is going to be living and operating underneath the daily 50 is going to be quite the thing. Like that, I think it's just going to kind of stay there, chop around, and continue to move down. Now, some of you who are probably savvy and picking up on the MOX indicator and you guys see the rules and all that kind of stuff, you might be looking at this and saying, hey, uh, price below the 50, but the MOX indicator above zero, isn't that a trampoline move? And yes, that's where I have to say potential because it doesn't have to do that. You guys should know the rules by now that you, you look at where a potential trampoline move is and you look for the confirmation on the next lower time frame. We do not have that confirmation any, any which way. <clears throat> so yeah, if I zoom out here on the hourly chart for the S&P, what do we have? We have a downtrending hourly 50, and we have price trying to get up over that downtrending hourly 50, which is, again, conflicting directions, you know, up against a downtrending moving average. And we have price over the moving average, but look how far below zero line the MOXIE indicator is. So this is an inverse trampoline move. And so even though we have the potential regular trampoline move on the daily, the hourly is telling us we are so far away from it even being a legitimate setup, it's just not even there yet. Maybe it will be sometime in the future, but right now, not even close. And so until we see something really shape up on the hourly, um, I am actually going to be pretty bearish on this and saying I think this is really just chop and you know maybe we can kind of move up a little bit, but we're just going to go up into resistance before I, th before I think we go lower. Um, as I said here on the daily chart, get price getting stuck and operating underneath the daily 50. And what we would see eventually if this were to, uh, if the potential trampoline move setup that we see here fades away and just doesn't work, then pretty much what we're going to see is price, you know, kind of hanging around in here and the moxie indicator will continue to go red. And sometime in the future, you'll see the moxie indicator go below zero. It'll fire a moxie price trigger, you know, this thing, the, the red candles versus the green candles, that's to the upside, the red is to the downside. And you would see that eventually fire. And so probably we're going to probably see like a red moxie price trigger fire somewhere over here in the coming days. 
and then that would also show you that it kept going down. So the potential trampoline move, I have a feeling, is just not going to exist and will uh, eventually fade away. And so that's kind of how we do that. I uh, just want to make sure we address that situation. Um, <clears throat> for now, on the 15 minute time frame, we have been seeing some positive divergence coming in. We've been talking about that. Then we got this double bottom. We continue to see more divergence, and the MOXIE indicator on the 15-minute time frame is basically staying over zero. So, you know, I've been telling everybody, hey, yeah, expect a bounce, expect some something to the upside, because we just got really, really oversold. And so this kind of move back up to the upside, yeah, totally makes sense. And it could go for a little ways. You know, it could go up here. I don't know. We just don't know. We just don't know how far it's going to go up. It could come up to the daily 21, you know, it could come up over here, all those kind of things. Um, but for now, I'm watching this, follow the 15 minute 50, and whenever it cannot hold the 15 minute 50 is probably a good sign of when price is going to start moving back to the downside. Uh, it doesn't have to be clean, it can continue to be choppy, so just be aware that, um, you know, as, as we kind of get into this area, it's just going to be messy and range bound and all that kind of stuff. And if I were to zoom out, let me kind of show you a couple things, you know, about these uh, inverse trampoline moves and kind of what we might be looking into and expecting. So here you see price getting over a downtrending hourly 50, the MOXIE indicator below zero. That's exactly what we're dealing with right now, inverse trampoline move. Then you can see here, it's kind of the same thing, right? We got price up over a downtrending hourly 50, MOXIE indicator below zero, and what it do? It fell back down and continued back to the downside. Uh, this one has actually hit exactly the hourly 50. And then here you can see the same thing. Price got up over a downtrending hourly 50, MOXIE indicator below zero. And what did it do? It continued to the downside. So, you know, short, 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 short. And that's why if we look at where we are currently, and I just, let me see if I can, there we go. And, you know, so I'm looking at this currently, it's like, well, we've got the same situation. We have price up over a downtrending hourly 50 with the MOXIE indicator below zero. So, you know, this could keep bouncing up a little bit, but eventually it's going to roll over and I think keep going lower. So make sure you're on the right side of the market for stuff like this. If we look at the UVXY, because this is the other thing that I use to kind of help balance out what's going on with what the, the, uh, the market is communicating to me versus the UVXY, it has been, I think, pretty much building. This is really kind of hanging out in this area. Uh, we took a couple trades and made a few bucks off of them, <clears throat> but then other than that, <clears throat> you know, the UVXY is a very, very tricky vehicle to trade if you guys are going to be dabbling with this one, but I do think it's going to generally be building something around here before it finally pops and explodes to the upside. Uh, that's what I think is going to happen, but again, we got to kind of get timing correctly because if it doesn't happen right away, the UVXY can kind of keep fading down just because it's a perpetually declining product, and and it only works when things really kind of drop in the market. So we got to kind of get this one timed properly. I'm not interested in it quite yet. Uh, I want to see a little bit more signs, but um, we do have potential trampoline move here on the hourly. And uh, we might be having some positive divergence here on the 15, but there's just still nothing quite yet to say. But I'm keeping a close eye on it because it is a, it's a fun vehicle I like to trade, and it's kind of challenging. Then if we look at the, the NASDAQ and the IWM, you know, they're, they're going to be looking the same thing as the, the SPY, just you know, different formations generally. But they're all doing the same thing. You can see the NASDAQ doing this thing, potential trampoline move on the daily, but the hourly is definitely saying inverse trampoline move, all that kind of stuff. And then if we look at the IWM, Again, just a, another variation on what's already out there. <clears throat> and I think the, the IWM actually on a daily chart uh, really shows, I think, what we're ex what I'm expecting for the S&P. So you can see here, back in the day, you see how price got below the daily 50, and then it kind of popped up and mostly, mostly popped up uh, um, to the underside of the daily 21 and the daily 50. Those were really, really good shorting opportunities right there. Yes, there was a bit of a fake out when it got really high up here, uh, but you can see it just faked out and then went careened the other direction. <clears throat> and if we look at this and what that looked like on the hourly chart, so here, let me kind of zoom in because I think this is a, a good example of where we're at currently for the S&P. But you can see here underneath the 21 and the 50 and all that kind of stuff. And what did we have here? An inverse trampoline move on the hourly time frame. So price should not be over the 50 if the MOXIE indicator is below zero. And price was trying to go up across the downtrending moving average. The only little thing was a little bit of a fake out right there. But, it's, but again, the MOXIE indicator stayed below zero, telling us don't trust the move to the upside. And I think that is exactly where we are right now with uh, the indices, but all of them. 
you know, they're all they're all doing the same thing like that. So I'm just not trusting this move to the upside. Uh, and then if we look at SOXX, you know, if we look at some of the, say, the semis and anything else that's out there, the semis clearly are much, much weaker than the rest of the market. Part of what we can see there is that, say, the S&P managed to get up to its daily, uh, daily 200, but notice that the semis double topped right there. So proportionately, uh, yes, they're weaker, but also proportionally, it makes a total sense that the semis are all the way back down at their previous lows and significantly below the daily 50, just because, you know, they didn't make it up here, so they're not going to go here. They went here, and so they're going to go here, you know, just there's proportionate. Uh, we actually shorted this. We shorted this right around here using the SOXS, which is the inverse leveraged ETF for this, and we also did that because that was another inverse trampling move on the hourly time frame. Price should not be over the 50 if the moxie indicator is below zero. And so that's why I'm saying don't, I'm not believing any of these moves to the upside. Um, yeah, NVIDIA, AMD, all those kind of things are all doing the same thing. They're all super weak. However, they are uh, very extended to the downside. They're really, really oversold. And so I'm, I'm expecting a bounce or a flag to kind of work with these things. And so that's, that's generally what I'm expecting. I wouldn't be surprised to see these things kind of migrate back up to, um, the, the mean or anything else like that, but, uh, not much to do. I really don't want to be trading them to the upside cause I think that they're still weak and can't really short them right now because they're pretty extended to the downside. So we're kind of a, in a lot of just holding, you know, we're just holding them. We're waiting for the market to chop around and uh, line up for some better situations. And there's just not much to do there. Then we can kind of look at, say, USO <clears throat> with uh, energy. And it has been a little bit of a back and forth. But over the last few days, we have gotten some clarification. And I think you can definitely see that now. In fact, this is what I've been telling people is that it would, there was support with USO at the monthly 10, the weekly 50, and the daily 200. But then the problem was it's pushing up into a downtrending daily 50 and the MOXIE indicator is significantly below zero. So again, inverse trampoline move. Price should not be over the 50 if the MOXIE indicator is below zero. And I said, uh, it looks to me like the 50 is going to be winning. And if that's the case, then we should see price fall off of the daily 200. And pff, looks like we're getting that uh, today and yesterday. So um, that's what I've been communicating. I think I mentioned it yesterday on uh, the Facebook, actually Wednesday, Facebook, YouTube session, and also to the, the Moxie group and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's definitely not working out to the long side, which um, continuation to the downside. And I think if we see energy go lower, then I think that's also going to uh, really telegraph lower moves for the market itself. Because I, I just don't see, actually, let me go to XOP. So USO, XOP, and with XOP, we definitely were seeing a pullback. We took a quick little trade on Gush, which is the leveraged ETF of XOP. Got about 11% on it, so it's just a super quick trade. And what you can see here is we had price up over a downtrending moving average again. And also you can see that there is a giant gap here between price and the daily 50. So in my eyes and how I see things, it was like, well, at some point, price is going to pull back to that 50 and want to fill that gap. And that's what it's doing right now. The other thing we could see leading up to that was price moving up and notice the moxie indicator was flat. You could also point it out that way or negative divergence like this. But really the big thing that I was noticing was this little section, price moving up, but the moxie indicator just really couldn't do anything. That's a form of negative divergence. And so uh, we took our quick little 11% on gush and then said, I think that there's going to be a pullback. I don't think there's anything to do about it, but I think that there's going to be a pullback. If you guys wanted to, you could be selling some calls or call spreads or whatever you want up here because likely price was just going to go sideways to down, and that's exactly what it did. And then UNG was honestly about the, the same thing as XOP. We took a quick little trade on Boil, which is the leveraged ETF of uh, UNG, and you could, we, we took that trade because, well, we were seeing things set up anyway, but we also took it because price pulled back to the daily 50 and found that as support. The Moxie price trigger fired also, and so we took a quick little trade right in through here, but then when we got up to pretty much double top area, I was like, eh, you know, this is looking a little not great, and there's, again, huge gap here between price and the daily 50, and price moving up, Moxie indicator down, I was seeing that there was some weakness in here. 
well, then give it a few more days, and there's the Moxie price trigger to the downside. And then here's price getting rejected by the underside of a downtrending uh, hourly 50, and just look at the Moxie indicator. Just totally red. Red, 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 red. And what it do? It, it took that rejection right there and then just beelined for the daily 50. Um, probably keep going. I, I, you know, there could be a, a bounce. You know, there's a bit of a gap here. You can see it's a little bit oversold. And so this is probably act as temporary support. There might be a bounce or a flag or something like that, but then probably going to continue to be weak. I just don't see much strength out there generally and overall. And then maybe another one, if we kind of look at uh, ARKK. Let's see if I type that in correctly. There we go. And of course, we know that these names, you know, the high growth stocks, they're all weak too. And you can see that they did the same thing that the market did and went back below the daily 50. Now, yes, potential trampoline move, but I just don't see anything yet. You know, yes, there's some positive divergence. Things did get oversold. They're probably going to bounce and chop a little bit, but same thing. I just don't, I just don't see anything strong here. There's nothing to trade to the upside here. All this is is an oversold bounce. So I think we're just kind of waiting for the next opportunity to kind of short these things. So we got that. Apple uh, continued to be weak today, maybe based on Jerome Powell's comments. Um, Apple couldn't even really bounce, uh, and this continues to prove why I'm saying I'm not I'm not looking to go long on any of these things because they just can't. Even if they're oversold, they just can't catch a bid, and that's what we're seeing. You know, spent just a, a little bit of time over the 15 minute 50, rolled back over, couldn't do it. Uh, still in a downtrend, still in a downtrend. You know, that's why I'm I'm just not buying any of these up moves. They're just they're just bounces in a downtrend. So nothing nothing really to do there. That's Apple, Microsoft. I'm probably gonna look a little bit more closely to the semis and all that kind of stuff, which is the kit true. You can see here, the same thing as Apple, the downtrend on the hourly chart. You know, sure it might be oversold on the daily chart, maybe it's coming into some support, but it, they just aren't catching any bids to the upside. So there's just really not much to do here. Uh, and then Tesla. Now Tesla maybe you've got some short covering rallies and you know it did have a little bit bigger of a bounce. And if you can do this if you want to catch it with the uh, day trading down on the two, the five and the fifteen. Um, you know, even Microsoft, but boy, some of these things are just not really working out very well. And um, that's why I'm like I'm I'm not interested. So sure, yeah, maybe maybe move there. You could do that if you want, but uh, it's it's touchy. You are going right up into a downtrending moving average with the MOX indicator below zero, and you're coming right up here into some resistance on the daily chart. And for now, all I see is this is a bounce off the daily 50. And what if it keeps going lower? That's that's really kind of what I'm viewing it. So these are all generally short setups, and I would keep an eye out for that kind of stuff if you're interested. So that was Tesla. And then some of the areas that I know people are talking about, uranium, ever since Japan said that they are going to uh, get back into nuclear power and probably a lot of other countries are going to follow suit, especially with the whole oil crisis and stuff like that. But again, uh, they had big volume, they did move up, but not much happening. They still can't quite really get anywhere. And I'm not sure if I'm really willing to risk my money into stuff like this that's number one choppy and number two it's a it's a tough market it's a bear market and why would we be thinking that uranium can go up if oil and natural gas can't go up I mean we're we're just they're at the beginning stages of just saying yeah we're going to get back into it well have they done anything about it are they buying more uranium right now are they building facilities right now I don't really know that answer but I think compared to what they already supply chains they already have with uh, natural gas and oil like we already have our society going for that and those are starting to go down so i just not really sure how uranium is going to buck the trend and go up compared to the rest of everything else that we see kind of not being strong and then you know other than that <laughs> uh tan solar now it maybe is going up from one technical reasons because it looks like you know, price bounced off the daily 50 or the hourly 200 i'm kind of seeing that with enph and some other names that they're just kind of bouncing off this stuff they definitely got uh, ahead of their skis you can see here they got really really extended very far from the daily 50 and what they do pull back to the daily 50 and i've seen that across the board now we get a big move to the upside i'm kind of thinking that this is again just kind of a bounce um i'm not sure if I'm interested yet there is still a potential inverse trampoline move here you can see that worked out this last time see price over the 50 
but the MOX indicator below zero and it failed. And I'm kind of wondering if we're in the same situation here too. So until I can actually see it hold and engage uh, moving averages like this to begin a trend, I I'm not totally convinced of this yet. And I think probably the, the, the biggest reason why the solars are so bubbly is because of you know, government money and the um, Inflation Reduction Act and all that kind of stuff, having money going into them. So anytime the our government wants to put money someplace, you know, the traders and investors uh, will definitely follow suit because, well, easy money. And in through here, ENPH, you can see basically bounced off its uh, hourly 200. You know, maybe you could say it bounced off its daily 21, but again, this is a pop. And unless it's, uh, for now, it's only following the 15 minute 50, but it has not proven or dem demonstrated itself on the hourly chart. So still kind of looking at this as a bounce until we can kind of confirm otherwise. Um, a lot of the other solar names are still looking kind of weak. These are the kind of the exceptions. ENPH, um, First Solar is still getting up there, but man, uh, First Solar is looking wildly, wildly overbought. It has been running this third ATR for quite some time. And uh, even here on the hourly chart, I was kind of looking at this as an inverse trampling move. And I think that's still going to be the situation, even though the it's kind of gotten back over zero. It's just getting really, really frothy up here. So I would not want to be the last one trying to play the long side in here because I just don't know how much further this thing can go. So if you are long, great. Tighten up your stops. Uh, be careful about it maybe rolling over a little bit because this is looking pretty frothy to the upside. So... Anyway, uh, that's kind of what I got for you guys. Hope you're enjoying it, and um, we'll catch you next week. Thanks again. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.